Okay, so you want to be a vlogger. Or maybe you already are and you're just looking for something better than your smartphone. Well, there are ample options out there, but the Nikon Z30 just joined the party. And yes, we're gonna talk about this camera today, but first, if you're new to the game, you're probably wondering to yourself, what even makes a good vlogging camera? Well, let's bust out of this studio and get into it. As someone who's run this channel for the better part of six years, I think I've got a pretty good handle on what'll make your life a whole lot easier and your footage better. Why? Because, well, I've made all the mistakes so you don't have to. So here are the things that should make for a great vlogging camera. Number one, it's ease of use. And what I mean by that is you should be able to just turn on all auto, hit record, and away you go. The technology should not get in the way of your art. Second is layout. It should be full of buttons. It should be fairly simple to understand and it should come with a nice little flippy screen like this one. Next up, number two is expandability. And what I mean by that is whether you like it or not, you will get better. And as you do get better, you're gonna want a camera that can grow with you. Yes, ease of use is so super important, but once you learn more and you wanna do more, you want a camera that can keep up with your talent. Number three next up is going to be image quality. Yes, smartphone image quality has improved leaps and bounds over the last several years, but you gotta consider that a tiny sensor as well as a CPU that's dedicated just as much to imaging as it is to that you can play Angry Birds without any glitching is only gonna be so good. What a non-smartphone camera allows you to do is get you a better image quality, better colors, and shallower depth of field. And at some point, you're gonna want that for your videos. The fourth point is sort of a mixed bag of things because generally there are three things that will make your video unwatchable. First being is that the content isn't very good. The second is that your audio is terrible. It's either very distant, making your audience have to strain to hear you, or is distorted from time to time. And that's also very difficult to listen to as well. And the third being autofocus. If the focus is constantly shifting, or you're always out of focus, well, that's gonna be very, very difficult to watch. Can we all agree? Now, the first thing, well, a camera can't really help you with that. That's on the creator. The second thing, the audio, well, a good vlogging camera should really have external audio solutions. You should be able to add microphones to it. You should be able to control the level or have very, very good auto gain on the, on the camera. And then in terms of autofocus, well, the good news is most vlogging cameras now, especially in the last few years, are awesome at autofocus, which is really the bread and butter of vlogging. So most cameras are great, but not all. And last up is build quality. And what I mean by that is you should be able to use the camera often and in the most ambitious of places and not worry about it falling apart. Now, I'm not saying, be reckless. I'm just saying that you should be able to throw it in your backpack and the thing is not going to fall apart. Now, how do we go down from here? And uh, with flip-flops no less. So let's talk about the Z30 and how it relates to my previous talking points. First, of course, ease of use. Now, I find the Z30 to be an excellent set it and forget it kind of camera. You really don't need to know anything about cameras to instantly get a very good image and start shooting. Now, out of the box, all you gotta do is you set it to auto, you unlock the lens, don't forget the lens cap, click it into video, flip the screen, and start recording. You don't even really need to know what any of the other buttons do. It should be nearly as easy as using your smartphone, and trust me, it is. Now, one note here is that the LCD screen has two modes, regular and self-portrait mode. Now, once you slip it into self-portrait, the layout changes to offer you less clutter so that you can focus on the framing. Now, if you're like me and you have control issues or you get a little nervous not seeing something like audio levels or an exposure tool like a histogram, well, you can simply manually change this in the settings to turn off the self-portrait mode. The camera is robust but light, meaning that you can handhold it for long periods of time without severe exhaustion, a proposition that may be significantly more difficult with a pro feature level camera. For those who want to forego adding a gimbal, the camera's stability is suitably robust. It doesn't offer a stabilized sensor, but using the optically stabilized kit lens in conjunction with their digital vibration reduction, AKA VR, produces a very watchable result right out of the box. The battery is small, but will still last for over an hour when shooting 4K. Now, if you need it to last longer than that, either buy more batteries 
or use a USB battery brick, or you can also plug it into a wall. This will allow you to power the camera for a much, much longer period of time. Let's talk about expansion and image quality. Now, once you've gone beyond the simple, you may wanna max out the potential of this camera, and in that particular case, you have a lot of options. For one, the camera sports a removable Z-mount lens, allowing the user to really use any lens that they want, but of course the priority would be with Nikon lenses like the Z-mount lenses or an F-mount lens with an adapter. I will add, however, that the 16-50 to kit lens is an excellent choice for starting out and definitely will not leave you for want. The camera also comes complete with the standard functionality of the most modern entry-level photo video hybrid cameras. And by that I mean, it shoots 4K video up to 30p and 60 to 120 frames per second in HD, giving you the firepower that you need for making interesting and creative shots. The sensor provides the user with lovely 20.9 megapixel photos and a color science that Nikon is arguably the most famous for. Sharp, rich, and accurate colors every time. A good camera should be robust enough to handle a variety of lighting conditions. This is definitely one area that a larger sensor camera will be leaps and bounds better than a mobile device. The Z30 is very good at low light. I'd say you can get a suitably clean image up to 12,800 ISO and a somewhat acceptable image above that. Now, I'm not saying that 12,800 or higher is good. I'm saying that it is more than good enough for social media or smaller screens. So I'm back outside here because I wanna give you a quick demonstration of the high ISO quality of this camera. It performs very, very well even when compared to much more expensive cameras. And that just shows the leaps and bounds we're making in technology. So what I've done is I've set this camera to all auto and that means that the only thing that should change on this camera right now is the ISO. The shutter speed and the aperture really shouldn't change much at all. So right now I'm at 250, 160 ISO and I'm gonna go in this tunnel and we're gonna watch what happens. Okay, so like I said right now it's 500, 400 ISO. We're now moving up to 10,000, 12,800 ISO right now in this cave, 18,000 ISO, 16, we're at 10,000 ISO. Obviously the backlit light there is gonna change some things, but this is sort of uh, the world we're gonna live in, 16,000 ISO, you can sort of see the quality, and then we're gonna come back out the cave, and it's just changing with us, which is also a great point about how easy this camera is to use. Set it on all auto, and away you go. When it comes to photography with this camera, the lightweight and the compactness certainly makes it super easy to carry around and travel with. However, there is no electronic viewfinder, which means that all of your photos will be shot like you do with a mobile phone. Now, this isn't horrible, but advanced photographers are going to struggle with this. Having an EVF allows the photographer to immerse themselves in the framing without distraction, and it saves us from having to navigate reflections on the screen, making it especially difficult to manage on sunny days. If photography is of serious interest to you, then there will be a time in which you will outgrow what an EVF-less camera can do for you. Okay, let's briefly talk about autofocus. In my short time with this camera, I had zero perceivable focus issues. The camera locks on very well and holds focus. And for more artistic shots, the touch tracking is absolutely fantastic. And this is a great example of all the trickle down of advancements that Nikon has made from their pro camera line. Where most new vloggers fall short is with audio. Audio can be intimidating and takes some know-how to get it right. And the best case scenario is that you are using a professional quality external microphone, something like a boom mic that I'm using here, onboard shotgun, or a lavalier microphone. But if you have to skimp on any of those for whatever reason, well, then you can be rest assured that the onboard microphone is actually quite good. There's absolutely no replacement for a proper shotgun mic and if you decide to go this route, well, I'm gonna highly suggest that you add the additional cold shoe wind furry that's gonna help buffer out all those wind gusts. Okay, so I'm back outside to show you the quality of the audio with the Z30. Now, we're not in the loudest of locations, but we are close to a major highway and to a lake, so there's a lot of birds and seagulls and noise, and there's people kind of milling about and walking around, so there's some ambient noise that we have to manage. Now, the audio is all auto-leveled, which means that it's going to control and make sure that I don't peak, aka distort, and it's also loud enough that when I'm speaking quietly, it sort of boosts it and picks it up so you can hear me. Now, the quality of the audio comes from the fact that I have a Rode Mic Pro sitting on top of the camera plugged in through the 3.5 jack here. Uh, now, if I remove this, we no longer have a directional source. We're gonna have an ambient source coming directly from the camera itself. And so here is the quality of the camera audio itself. 
you're probably going to hear a lot more of my surroundings. Uh, may pick up a little bit more sort of breezy sounds or noise sounds, and my voice is a little more tinnier and distant. Um, but generally speaking, on the Z30, it's a much, much better uh, onboard audio than I've heard of recent cameras. So, oh, we got a plane, and you can hear there's, we're actually near an airport as well. There it is. I'm going to plug this in so now you can hear the difference again. There we go. So now the audio is back onto this microphone. Hopefully that plane sound is a little bit less. And the moral of the story is here that if you can't afford a microphone, the onboard audio is not that bad. It's actually quite usable, especially in a relatively quiet space. Um, but it's always better if you can put some onboard audio, whether it's going to be a condenser mic on top of your camera or you have a lavalier mic perhaps, especially if you're further away from your microphone. The onboard audio is only ever gonna work anyways if you're super close to your camera. All right, and finishing up on the topic of audio, the audio levels on this camera are fully adjustable, but auto works actually incredibly well. The only current downside here is that there is really no headphone port, meaning that you sort of just have to cross your fingers and hope that the audio sounds good. For most people, I don't think this is gonna be an issue. And lastly, build. As a standalone camera, I actually really love how light this camera is and how the deep grip makes it really so easy to hold on to. And despite the plastic body, which we normally find in entry-level cameras, it feels very robust. This is most certainly a camera that can take some abuse. I carried this camera around with me for a few days and I always enjoyed having it in my hand. Certainly, if you're filming yourself, it makes the most sense to get a handle for it. Now you can get a basic one that operates, you know, as a tripod, but Nikon does offer the Z30 Creators Accessory Kit, which includes a Bluetooth grip and a shotgun microphone. Certainly a worthwhile investment for those who shoot very often. And that's it for today, folks. Thank you so much for watching. As always, please subscribe to this channel for more videos like this and comment in the comment section below. If you don't know why by now, I don't know what to tell you. Welcome back from the 1950s, I guess. For me, for now, I'm out. Peace.